All right, so I'm in Pullman, Washington right now in the wonderful abode, the Senor Cascade. Him and his wife, Jess, have the patience enough to allow me to, into their home. Did a little bit of shoveling and yard work. Earned my keep. They got a nice new house and a new dog and living the American dream. Yeah, I'm gonna be here for the next two days, do some laundry <laughs> because I ran out of clothes. Cascade has one of these, which is akin to the kind that I really like um, with like legit panniers, you know, compared to mine. So we're gonna go out and get something to eat and just kinda live the life here. Cause then uh, after this, it's all hoofing it in Montana. There they are. <laughs> I've had everybody had have to awkwardly do that. We're going to the red caboose. Or is that one? I think it's the blue, maybe the green. <laughs> it's a caboose color. It's a caboose color. The loose caboose and palouse. Yeah, say that again. The loose. Caboose and Palouse. 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 And I have to finish my shower beer. Hello! Among these gentle and rolling hills is the college town of Pullman on the border of the Panhandle of Idaho. The hills around us are really something else. Farmers here don't need to add any above or below ground irrigation to water their crops. It really is amazing farmland here. The tops of the hills don't burn in the sun because the water's drained out. It really holds in all of its moisture. Washington University is a main source of income here, and it's the second largest four-year university in the state. The city of Pullman is named after George Pullman, an American engineer and industrialist from the Gilded Age. The city of Pullman, Washington used to be called Three Forks, but they changed their name to Pullman after the rail car industrialist George Pullman, and it's not agreed on why. George Pullman got his love of engineering from growing up on the Erie Canal, one of the largest engineering projects of the 19th century. Growing up, he moved to Chicago, which was an up-and-coming railroad city in the 1850s and 60s. He was one of the engineers who helped raise the buildings of Chicago to create a new sewer system. His real claim to fame was his ability to make the invention of the sleeping car profitable. A sleeping car was a special kind of passenger train car that people could sleep in over long distances and night travel. They were marked as the luxury of the middle class and the Pullman company would own and get paid for the sleeping cars they attached to other railroad companies as trains. The popularity and convenience of sleeping cars led to a new occupation, Pullman porters. Every Pullman car was staffed by a porter, a railroad worker who would help clean the car, set up beds, and load and unload luggage and passengers. The Latin word portare means to carry. Anyway, the majority of Pullman porters were black. What's significant about this is how well they were paid. The Pullman Company was one of the most lucrative and secure places for African Americans in the post-Civil War era. Most of the attendants were named George, after George Pullman, regardless of their name. At one time, the Pullman Company was the largest employer of African Americans in the United States. The porters themselves eventually gained political recognition and unionized as the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, which would go on to start some of the first civil rights movements in the 1920s to 1940s, setting in motion rumblings that would lead to movements led by Martin Luther King Jr. a generation later in the 1960s. George Pullman was not always a generous industrialist. During the Gilded Age, executives of companies didn't have to adhere to many safety standards, pollution standards, taxes, or regulations. Their workers also went without minimum wage, benefits, weekends, holidays, and other luxuries that were fought for in the progressive labor movements of the early 20th century. With the company fortune, Pullman named a town after himself called Pullman, Illinois, which is now a part of the south side of the Chicago metro today. Pullman, Illinois was a company town where workers would live and pay rent to work for the company. Many that lived there paid horrible water and gas rates and they were not allowed to buy or own their own homes. In 1893, there was a severe recession called the Panic of 1893. In response to keep profits up, the Pullman company laid off workers and reduced wages without reducing the rents of the company town. 250,000 workers nationwide went on strike, blockading trains, boycotting Pullman trains, and staging walkouts from their positions. The boycotts led to looting, mobs, and violence. The National Guard was sent in, which ended up resulting in even more violence. The Pullman strike led to 30 dead and 57 injured. When the strike was over, President Grover Cleveland, who was unpopular amongst the populist working class that were fighting for labor rights, worked with Congress to create Labor Day as a federal holiday. Legislation passed six days after the strike ended. A few years later, George Pullman died of a heart attack at age 66 in 1897, three years after the strike. Afraid his former employees and labor supporters may exhume his corpse, Pullman had himself buried in the Graceland Cemetery in Chicago in a very strange manner. His mahogany coffin was sealed inside a block of 18-inch reinforced concrete and lowered into his grave, which was covered with asphalt and tar paper. 
More concrete was poured on top of that, followed by a layer of steel rails bolted together while covered in another layer of concrete. It took two days to bury Pullman. In the end, the Illinois Supreme Court had the company divest itself from Pullman, Illinois, and it became a neighborhood of the city of Chicago. There are actually many accounts as to why the small town in Washington was named after Pullman. One story says Pullman was the friend of a founder of the city, another was a donor wanted it named after Pullman. Some say it's because they wanted Pullman to build a plant in their city. None of them seem to agree on anything except for one thing. It was named after George. <laughs>